hi guys welcome back to my channel I promised you guys that I was gonna do a video um, giving a course by course um, giving course by course um, advice uh, pertaining to Ziali uh, courses so today we'll be giving I'll give you guys a snippet and then I will do like individual videos where I talk about the courses one like by themselves breaking down the course outline as well as maybe the possible strategies you can have for each and every one of the courses and I hope that this will be helpful for you I got a lot of messages from you guys and I'm so overwhelmed by your support and I just want to say thank you um, if you're watching this video and you're not yet subscribed to my channel please make sure that you subscribe like it share it and I hope this video benefits you or your loved one or someone that you know who you like benefit from this so I cleared my Ziali in the 2018-2019 intake um, I got caught to the bar on the 15th of November 2019 probably the most exciting day of my life um, to date I'm hoping my wedding would help that <laughs> but right now it's the best day of my life best no one can take that away from me best day of my life Okay, arguably the best day of my life, but um, I've had some good moments, guys. I've had some good moments. Okay, let's get into the video. So today, we're talking about each and every one of the courses and possible strategies. So I'm going to start by first telling you guys that you need to have a strategy going into ZLE. Like, you need to have a strategy. And for me, my strategy was work hard in courses that need you to work hard but work smart in courses that don't need you to work hard and i'm going to explain so as i had mentioned in my earlier video ziali offers you 10 courses right 10 courses one of those courses is split into two and um which makes it 11 courses but your results are for 10 courses because the two become one and yeah 10 courses right so it's very important to understand what each and every one of those courses has in store for you so what i'm gonna tell you guys that i did that i that i advise that you do and i mean also as i said in my previous video if you guys haven't seen it i'm gonna put the link in the description box but what i said in my previous videos you need to know yourself and you need to understand what works for you because what works for me might not work for you but i feel like it's a good um stepping stone for you guys who um would just like some help generally right so the first thing i'm going to tell you is have a plan and by have a plan i mean just have a timetable that you can follow and be very gradual with your studying like don't pile things up and wait for the last minute like constantly study and i'll tell you guys it was very difficult for me because going through university that was not the type of student i was i was the last minute exams are starting on monday it's friday and this is when i'm trying to understand what the course is about which is not a good thing and you can't take that risk at ZLE because remember you have 10 courses whereas at university you have four courses that you learn over a short period of time whereas here you're learning these courses over a period of one year so you find that the amount of work that you're doing is so much and it becomes very difficult for you to generally be able to um to be, able to be able to juggle them at the last minute so that's why I said that you should gradually study your courses and for you to be able to gradually study your courses you need to have a timetable the other reason you need to have a timetable is because you find yourself having a bias towards certain courses so like for me my bias was towards conveyancy guys loved conveyancy I loved it so much like You know what? I feel like I should have like videos teaching conveyancing because I feel like everyone should love it as much as I do. Like it's such an interesting course. And I don't know if it's because I had a tutor, but he was so good and he helped me understand things so much better. But also it's just such an interesting course and such a helpful one in practice for me and in the firm that I'm working in because we do do a lot of conveyances and transfer of properties. For you guys who don't know what conveyancing is, it's the course that teaches you how to like legally pass property from one person to another and generally dealing with property and whatnot i feel like that's like the the best or the easiest um description i can give of the course but it was my favorite so i found myself constantly studying it right and yes i needed to because it's one of those that needs you to actually know like the 
the clauses in certain documents right so i found myself constantly studying it i found myself constantly studying accounts because i was scared i was going to fail as i had mentioned in my i don't know i don't know if i mentioned this to you guys in my previous video but i am totally afraid of numbers numbers are not my strong point so when i heard that those accounts at Zelly, i'm like lord it's over for me lord oh my god you know and then i found myself every day doing accounts doing accounts and then um i ended up having a bias towards those two courses i also had can i also kind of had a bias towards um which other course did i study criminal procedure because i absolutely loved it like i used to study that course like every other day also because it's bulky but so let me get back to i, I get derailed guys i talk too much but um what i'm trying to say is because of the bias that you have towards certain courses right you find yourself constantly in a battle of studying those same courses and remember you don't have so much time in the day when you're at the early, like when you're actually going to the early. so it's very important for you to like give yourself a routine and give yourself like give yourself a timetable to follow so that you find yourself studying a lot of courses i'll tell you um one of the hiccups that i had was um i never used to study commercial transactions because um I, I i mean the course is bulky but i just didn't like it so i found myself like having so much to do in com commercial transactions and because of that like it became very difficult for me to like catch up when everyone else was like at a different level in the course you know what i mean so that's why you guys should should i don't even know if i can stress this enough but get yourselves a timetable that you strictly follow because you will end up studying two courses or three courses and those are the two courses or three courses you end up passing because that's all you're spending your time in so i'm just going to give you guys a summary of the courses you're going to be doing right so if by the time you're watching this video the curriculum hasn't changed obviously your first um the subjects are really are called heads right so your head one is ethics your head two is accounts your head three is conveyancing um your head four is probate and succession your head five is commercial transactions your head six is company law your head seven one remember i told you guys that there was there's one course that has two subjects two sorry not two subjects two heads combined as one did i say that right yes anyway so your head seven one and your head seven two all right so head seven one is high court procedure high court civil procedure and your head seven two is subordinate court civil procedure then you have your head eight which is domestic relations your head nine which is criminal procedure and your head 10 which is evidence so i'm just gonna break the, the courses down from the first one and the advice that i have for you guys going into it because you remember what i said you guys need to have a strategy so i feel like with ziali you need to really work smart more than you work hard i mean hard work is such an important element in getting you past um your bar exam but it's so important to work smart because there's certain courses that actually you can pass um without as much effort as you would put in other courses for you to be able to pass and i want to say this very loosely and lightly i um I, i'm not discouraging you guys from studying the courses i mean study the courses because it's important for you to understand because you need those things in practice but what i'll tell you is because you're trying to clear your bar exam you do have a substantial knowledge of like your base courses and some of those base courses that you learn in university you find them at ziali and they're very very similar the only thing is at ziali i taught the practical part of it whereas in university i taught the analytical and academic part of law right whereas ziali will teach you sorry whereas university will teach you um what is something ziali will teach you how to go about doing a particular process right so for example in university you learn about the law of tort and you learn about negligence at university they'll teach you the elements of negligence at ziali they'll teach you after you've established that this is negligence this is how you institute a proceeding in court right so that's what ziali does so my advice to you guys is um you need to be able to work smart so this is what i mean i'll give you guys each of the heads and why i say what i'm saying 
So head one is ethics. Ethics is, so personally, I went to the University of Lusaka and um, at the University of Lusaka, ethics was not a course that was taught um, as part of our curriculum in the four years of study that I was there. And therefore, when I went to Ziali, this was a new course, but I know that there's other universities that teach ethics. And so those people who had learned ethics, um, I don't know how their take was on ethics, but this was my take because I never learned it. Um, the lecture was very clear. And I'm sure if you are within the next few intakes, you probably have the same lecturer that I did. Um, he's very clear with what he, what he's teaching you. So ethics is a course that deals with your conduct, right? As a lawyer. So if your clients give you money, how do you treat it? How do you treat your colleagues in, in the legal profession? How do you treat the court? How do you treat your clients generally? Who is your client? Um, what if your client tells you they're guilty of an offense? What do you do? So that's what ethics teaches you about because ethics, I think, is the foundation of your legal career. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys who are already in the legal profession understand that the Law Association of Zambia is the body that basically governs us as lawyers. Ethics basically teaches you what, how you need to conduct yourself because university doesn't teach you that. University doesn't teach you um, a lot of stuff that... Um, that Ziali will teach you when it comes to ethics because now you're actually getting into practice, right? So that's ethics. Ethics, take down his notes. Pay attention to what he's saying. There's, there's like there's no there's no there's no gimmicks. There's nothing. Um, with ethics, it's about how you answer your questions. You need to understand what you're learning. Um, so if, say for example, if he asks you what are the duties of a legal practitioner to the court and that's just like a blunt example i will do another video basically talking through the course but um what are, what are the duties of a legal practitioner to the court you should be able to list them and if the lecturer says explain so it's very important to understand what the question is that your lecturer will before your exams kind of like give you an idea of what he's expecting from you and also i feel like you should be able to ask the questions that you need to ask so that you're able to you know get through the course you should be able to adjust your answers based on what you've studied to what your lecturer has requested you to do when answering the questions because you might have the knowledge of the course but if you're unable to put that knowledge down on paper in the way that your lecturer expects it to be answered, then you have a problem. And that's why um, it's important for ethics, for example, to take down notes because his exams are basically based on what he's taught you in class. So pay attention to ethics. It's been a killer the past few intakes and um, don't take it lightly. It seems like a very easy going course, but it could throw you off. And I have a couple of my, my mates who, who were thrown off because of ethics and I don't want that to be you guys. Um, for them, they, they knew that it probably because they didn't study a topic or whatnot. And then, yeah, here we are. So the next course is accounts. Guys, when I told you I was afraid of accounts, like, yo, <laughs> I was so scared when I heard there's accounts at Ziali. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So that's the course I'm failing, right? Cool. All right. I was so scared. So with accounts, if you've done bookkeeping in high school or basic accounting, that is what you'd be doing at Ziali. Um, It's nothing scary. It's actually quite... Um, I don't say easy but it's 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 easy to grasp even for me who I'm telling you my math skills are zero zero like zero we have zero math skills over here okay maybe these days I'm even a bit more confident with my mathematical skills but guys going into Ziali I was just like it's over it's done I am done I'm finished but I found myself actually being very good at accounts so this is my recommendation. I won't even go in, in, in depth with accounts, guys. Get yourself a copy of Frank Wood. I am putting a picture of Frank Wood right here, guys. Your syllabus will tell you which edition to get, but here's my advice. In accounts, you can get a distinction, right? And I'm not saying this from without. This is me who was totally scared of accounts and I will brag a little bit I passed very very well and by very very well because it's math like if the answer is two it's two and if you know how to do accounts you will definitely get a really good grade but this is what I'm telling you 
don't let your fear of something that you don't know prohibit you from like basically flourishing i flourished i was like oh my god i actually couldn't believe it distinction in accounting once you have frank wood right here's my advice because account is something that i think you need to understand the formulas you need to understand how to balance things and it's very very important that you practice and fail at your study desk so that in case a similar question comes you're not gonna fail it in your exam guys there is nothing more frustrating than coming back from your exam and seeing a similar if not exact question in your textbook that you could have practiced practice 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 frankwood has questions and answers at the back so you need to be able to practice and then go check your answers mark yourself see where you went wrong so that when you're going to your exam honestly if you want to fail it's up to you right but that's me get yourself a copy of frankwood you will be given slides by the lecturer but i'd advise you to use frankwood because frankwood is more how do i put it it explains things in depth whereas you know like when you're learning in class like with slides and everything like things are summarized but i feel like that's a marriage for people who've done accounts before but if you've never done accounts before my advice get yourself a copy of frankwood you can find it in book world you can find it i think you can find it in gray matter and i think you can find it in any of the bookstores but it is a must when you're just about to start your diary or if you're halfway through your diary and you don't have a copy get yourself a copy i know people circulate like a soft copy of it but get yourself a hard copy because you're able to like be accountable with your hard copy take the questions that you haven't answered take the questions that you've answered if you have any problems understanding what's in frankwood find someone around you remember what i said have vision buddies find someone around you who's very good at accounts and ask them to help you so for me it was my she was very very good at accounts and i remember before me years guys I was good with the topics when they started going through petty cash petty cash it became a big word for me and she had done tuition for accounts and she not as much though but she was so good at those petty cash things when she taught me i was full on ready for the exam but you see i had studied so it was easy for me to understand what she was telling me because she was now explaining things to me so if you don't understand something find someone who's good at what you don't understand and ask them to help you you don't need tuition get yourself a copy of frankwood get yourself a vision buddy who can help you to understand the topics that frankwood has failed to teach you but frankwood is so clear so straightforward i feel like talk too much about frankwood but it's such a good book I'm gonna put it there again I'm gonna put it there. I got it as a gift, so I don't know where my uncle got it from, but best gift for my yearly. So helpful. So head three. <laughs> my favorite. Convincing. I feel like I spoke about it before. But guys, I'm gonna give you the cheat code to conveyancing. First of all, I'm gonna ask my tutor if I can put his details in the description box because guys, he is the plug. The one tuition that I took was conveyancing. And that's because um, a colleague of mine, uh, Mwamba, who was in a few intakes before me, had advised me to go to a tutor and um, it really helped her. And it's so helpful, guys. He was so on point. So your lecturer will teach you everything that you need to know. You will learn in the classroom very quickly, but you will still learn them because he will cover everything. But... <laughs> guys my tutor was a plug that's all i'm saying he made me love it he made me understand it and now even going into practice your friend girl is a g at convincing she understands the process but it's also so important for you even as you are daily to understand some of these courses because they actually come in handy and you will find them in practice convincing is one of them there is no firm that you will go to that will not ask you at one point or the other to help them with the property transfer whether it's from a child to a from a mother to a child or from people that are selling or whether it's someone who's borrowing money because they need a mortgage that's what convincing that's where convincing comes in it's super important right so here's a cheat code with convincing your exams are set in such a way that from my experience and from my like my analysis of things when i got past papers and i was just trying to like get a feel of what the exam would be like before my mid years um you will see that there's a trend in the way questions are asked 
there's things that you just need to know things that you just need to know first thing that you need to know always in exam papers lodgement schedules you cannot run away from a lodgement schedule guys those guys who are daily right now you guys understand you can't run away those who have done it will tell you you can't run away from a lodgement schedule because it's always in your exam the second thing is completion statements they are always in your exam but here's a cheat code guys understand those two things because if you know how to draft your lodgement schedules if you know what you need to lodge with the ministry of lands then you have no issues with what your disbursements are and if you have no issues with what your disbursements are those questions are usually like 15 marks that's a free 15 marks completion statements are numbers the answer is two it's two therefore if you get it right you bag yourself a good 15 points or 15 marks and that's already 30 30 marks guys that's a good 30 marks you need to know your lodgement schedules and you need to know your completion statements be very smart about it understand them if you guys need help i will do a video explaining both of them from a ziali perspective and yeah i will i'll teach you guys how to do them in another video but so important and another thing that you also need to be able to do is you need to be able to um, understand mortgages, understand leases, understand co oh, lease calculations, so important. I'm going to do a video on that as well when I do the completion statements one. Understand um, contracts of sale, understand the different types of um, parties when you go to deeds of assignment favorite favorite guys guys i love this course Deeds of assignment was so good understand the different forms so once you get that you're good with commencing you are perfectly good understand the process and you are fine from the beginning to the end and you're fine understand leases understand the important clauses in leases and then you're fine right and remember i think you're, you're given eight questions and you answer five questions so be very strategic with how you answer your questions that's so so important right so anyway moving on um head four probate i feel like i just need to do like a whole nother video for probate guys probate is very bulky and you need to know how to answer your questions in your exam that's all i'm going to say know how to answer your questions i was not the biggest probate master but i was friends with probate masters and my probate friends probate master friends helped me and i understood how to answer questions and my grade in probate was great <laughs> i can't complain it was good right but it's really about how to answer questions because with this course and if you're taught by mr chimoka he really needs you to understand his questions and answer them in the way that he wants you to answer them you might think you understand something and then you just realize that you don't so my advice to you is if you know someone who's done ziali before exhibit a ask them how to answer the questions in probate so important so that even as you are studying from the beginning or maybe at least okay not from the beginning because then it doesn't really make sense but at least before mid years maybe like a month and a half before mid years ask them how to answer questions so that even as you prepare for your mid years and your finals you kind of get a feel of how the questions are asked and how you're expected to answer and therefore that changes the way that you study because then you you study to be able to um be able to answer the questions correctly and that's what you want to do so that's probate head five oh five <laughs> head five is commercial transactions with commercial transactions it's a very very bulky course um your notes are dictated to you very quickly so i would i would advise you guys to uh, pay attention to the lecturer when he's teaching um commercial transactions um he's always open to questions so make sure that you are like you ask questions where you're not clear but also commercial transactions is another one where i would advise this this was me working smart with commercial transactions commercial transactions is very interesting right um I didn't like it when I was at Daily, but that's only because it was bulky. And I remember I told you guys I was behind in studying. So I was like, this course has so much, gosh. 
but here's one thing that I discovered and I'm gonna give you guys a cheat code for commercial transactions like best thing I discovered guys it was so helpful um, when you're studying commercial transactions study from the beginning so I, I, I don't remember what the first topic was but I think it's something to do with the commercial quotes and whatnot um, get your past papers so get as many past papers as you can for commercial transactions I'd advise maybe up to like even as far as far back as 2010 uh, compile those have yourself a nice booklet bound and ready for you to start studying when you start studying commercial transactions study the course study the topics okay let me give you an example study agency for example well, but you have started from the beginning so study if you're studying agency study agency go to your past papers try and answer a question on agency then I'd advise you guys to try and get your hands on um, the model answers for commercial transactions so um, get yourself a, like try and get model answers because the model answers are like the marking sheet for like previous previous um, previous intakes and see how a question that you would have answered will be answered in the model answers it will give you a guideline of whether you are studying it the right way or not right and so like make sure that if you say today I'm doing agency get all the past papers get all the past papers take all the questions and agency then start answering them after you studied if the answers do not tally then you know there's a problem and you need to go back look at the model answers look at how the answer how how the answer the model answer is and tailor that with the knowledge that you've acquired from your study best thing I have ever done and I'll tell you why because commercial transactions is extremely bulky the exams are also extremely bulky and you'll find yourself getting overwhelmed in the exam room because of how much you need to answer in the time period that you need to answer it right don't even feel ashamed of writing on your exam paper but I'm gonna do one on exams guys because you need to be mentally prepared for those exams I'm gonna do I think next week's video will be preparing for exams because I know um, this current intake should be writing exam soon so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a quick exam exam advice video um, soon but yeah so yeah as I was saying so with commercial transactions that is what you need to do very bulky course the, ex the exams equally as bulky so what you need to do is you need to be able to answer questions in the way that the model answers are giving because there are a lot and you might end up just pouring 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 and regurgitating your notes is that the word v re, reproducing reproducing your notes and that's not what i don't think that's what the lecturer wants so make sure that you go through the model answers and the past papers as you study right great company law oh this one's a good one i actually really liked company law failed it at my mid years <laughs> I even knew guys coming out of my exam I was just like okay guys I failed I knew I had failed I mean it wasn't bad failing but it wasn't the 50% mark <laughs> but yeah so um, with company law my advice would be listen very carefully to what your lecturer is saying and just so that you guys get this clear my advice is for mainstream who have lecturers that have been teaching at the early for some time i know there's a different stream and i'm gonna get um, one of my colleagues who's also in that stream um he did very well at his mid years um i'm hoping that i can get him to feature on on on, on this channel and give you guys tips on that stream and how to go about the lecturers in that stream so that's just my disclaimer now so you guys in the second stream just hold on hold on for the video <laughs> and it will come right okay so sorry about company law i was saying pay attention because company law has one liner questions guys <laughs> when you start scratching your head and you're like what 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 is what is this what is what is this but girl girl had to find a solution for y'all <laughs> i will put a picture of this book that helped me um i'll give a caution about this book though because of how the answers are in the book 
I mean it's helpful but you need to be careful um, just understand first of all what your lecturer is teaching you understand the questions and then give answers based off of what you've understood in line with what the book would you know like the book gives you like the structure of your answer and trust me it did wonders for me because at mid years I will not even be ashamed to say what I got I got 46 percent yeah got 46 percent but at finals after I went through my notes went through past papers to see these one-liners guys one-liners for me are the worst they are the worst I'd rather even ask me what is but that's not the legal profession the legal profession is not what is you're given scenarios and situations and sometimes you're given something just to rack your brain a little bit and guys it did wonder all i'm saying is we were not even in the 50s we had jumped over the 50s that's how well sis did learn um from like class and then kind of like see how the structure of your questions or just the structure of your answers should be and then after you do that fireworks people fireworks it will work very well for you and i hope it will be very helpful right <laughs> drum roll for the next course guys oh. hit seven one Whew. where to begin with hit seven one where do i begin <laughs> okay so i feel like with hit seven one the notion has been that it's a very difficult course right i won't say it's easy because it's not it's extremely bulky but i will say this with hit 7 one and this is my advice for hit 7 one understand the preliminary stuff in the course the courts which courts do what those things very important read the cases that are given to you for each each topic read them because those cases tend to reveal certain things that your lecturer could pick out and ask as a question right um with a seven one another thing is it's very very bulky it's bulky guys like it's very 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 bulky but i loved it okay let me just say right it was my it was if 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 i had like a top five right it would be like commencing then criminal procedure then hit 7-1 which is high court procedure i loved it and i don't know if it's because like mr simeza state council simeza was like the lecturer because he was so good like i was just like gosh i just want to know things the way he knows them <laughs> no like no jokes guys i was just like mind blown right but um with the course you really need to read the cases because the cases reveal a lot for you and i remember at mid-years and i think that's what saved me guys your mid-year exams are important don't let anyone lie to you your mid-year exams are very very important strive to get high marks at your mid-years because it helps you it cushions you at your finals if you make a mistake if you have a good CA, it really does cushion you. And I don't believe the rumors that people say, like, Nozi Ali doesn't even pay attention to people's medias. Guys, I think they do. And I'm saying this because I'm just like, God knows that I did not do very well in my finals. Because <laughs> anyone who's gone through my final paper, guys, it was not an easy paper. I must, I must, I must say it wasn't an easy paper. And it was easy for you to make mistakes, which I think I did. But because I did very well at my mid-years, I think that cushioned me a lot. And I ended up passing the course. Whereas the pass rate, I think, was like, I think there were seven of us out of the 350-something of us that we were in my class. Seven people passed that course. It was so horrible, right? So I'll tell you, from the beginning, study, practice. So this is the one where I'd be like, practice, 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 practice. Convincing, I should have said, practice, 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 because you need to, right? But head seven one practice um use the precedence if you don't know how to use because he does give you atkins code forms try and get someone who understands how they work and just start practicing drafting understanding the style of drafting like draft 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 till you can draft no more 
that's all i'm going to say understand how to know how to draft a summons know how to draft an affidavit so important i can't even stress this enough you should be able to draft a summons and affidavit from the top of your head right but also like generally just like kind of get yourself into like drafting mode like switch on drafting mode like ding drafting mode and you kill it and that's my advice for head seven one like i don't even i don't even know what to say about it to be honest apart from draft 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 study 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 draft 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 it would be very helpful for you as well if you draft at your firm um practice drafting without using uh precedence like draft from your head when you practice you draft and then you go back and see if you've made any mistakes trust me that's the best thing you can do for yourself like because they are not lying to anyone else but yourself so just make sure that you're able to like draft stuff like proper 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 stuff right that's head seven one head seven two subordinate court procedure an interesting one i actually really liked it um it's not a difficult course it's quite straightforward the lecturer is very straightforward he knows what he tells you what he wants his notes are very straightforward he even gives you precedents and if you go through his precedents front and back back and front print them out guys print things out it's always easier to see things in hard copy because you remember and i feel like maybe it's just me but like photographic memory just like you remember a page you and a page number will remind you what the affidavit is and then how you you know how you answer stuff kind of yeah yeah but that was that was me right domestic relations so with domestic relations right it's not a very bulky course but my advice would be to draft 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 so if you're being taught by mrs chesha um yeah draft practice your drafting draft draft everything if she's ever told you there's an application that you need to that requires drafting draft 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 that's my advice for dr so domestic relations deals with um it's like family law divorces um custody issues uh, gbv stuff so that's what that's what you'll be doing in domestic relations so practice 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 your drafting that's that's what i have to say about domestic relations just practice your drafting you'll be good practice your drafting and you'll be good head nine yay i couldn't wait you know i was just like when are we reaching head nine because fave guys i was legit like so i've never been into criminal law right um however i must say that i was privileged in the last year i worked with uh Care and we did some criminal law and to be honest it was like life-changing right i was so eager to practice what i was taught in criminal procedure and i was so happy to have been given the opportunity so shout out to up zambia guys having given that background i just want to tell you guys that guys guys justice justice machenga does the thing i am just saying like honestly one of my favorite lecturers at Ziali because he's hella funny, hella funny, but breaks down criminal procedure. Like, if I can do that one day in my life somehow, yo, I am ready to do it because he is so good. Like, he actually makes you want to become a criminal lawyer, which I am not, but he makes you want to become that because you reach a point of understanding the course where, like, whoo. Yes, I know what I'm doing. All right, so yes, this was excited. Um, I must say that, um, yeah, guys, criminal procedure. There is a cheat code here. I feel like I should have like an instrumental for like cheat codes. I need to find one. I just don't know where I'm gonna get one. <laughs> like cheat code, cheat code. Anyway, criminal procedure is interesting. Very bulky. But once you understand it, 100% it should be one of the courses that you're passing comfortably. And I say this because the questions are never the exact same question. So he never ever repeats a question with the exact same, like, same concept, but different 
way in which he brings his questions. So he often tell you like, I never repeat questions. But the truth is, the concepts of the questions are actually kind of repeated. So there's certain things that you can't run away from in criminal procedure. You need to understand bail. You need to understand, um, yeah, so there's bail. There's, um, oh my gosh, it just went blank. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to remember. There's bail. And there's um, sentencing, and there's uh, I'm just trying to remember all the arrests. There's a number of things, right? But if you go through the past papers, you see that certain questions are like certain certain top certain topics are never missed in his exams. Bail is one of them. Know how to draft your bail applications, like whether it's like from bail from the from from the lowest courts. You mess up, go to high court, whether it's on appeal or it's pending trial or it's constitutional bail. Like you should know each and every one of them and the scenarios in which you need to make such bail applications, right? So important, so so important. And with criminal procedure, it's like the small things. It's like you, um, I feel like in your spare time or generally, like sitting on a Saturday, sitting on a Sunday, get your penal code read through your penal code understand the offenses in the penal code you will not believe how that one piece of advice will help you and i'll tell you guys because i have a test like a testimony so i he said to us before mid years you guys should read you you should read through your penal code to understand some of these offenses and i was like okay so one saturday i sat down and i was just reading through the penal code and i'm like this is an offense wait what this is an offense and there was one offense which is called infanticide where you kill a child right um so initially you would think murder it'd be like it's murder it's definitely murder now it's called infanticide and it was in our exam and it meant that um the bill application was something else it wasn't like for murder or whatever because you know like with murder I don't want to get into the technicalities because you guys are going to learn this stuff. But like, I was like, oh, and I wrote it and everyone was like, yeah, that was murder. And I was just like, was it murder? <laughs> then he came and he's like, it's infanticide. And I'm like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but yeah, you guys should read to you, your penal code and read the cases. I feel like criminal cases are quite interesting compared to civil cases. So like you actually get entertained by what human beings do to be honest like i am at i am really like i've reached a point where i'm just like human beings can do everything and anything like i don't put anything past y'all i don't put anything past you guys and yeah criminal procedure taught me that um it was very so as i said it's one of those you can be very strategic with it but you also need to understand it because if you don't understand it you can't be able to like strategically answer your questions and so study progressively it is bulky guys this is a bulky course study from the beginning ask your questions as i said jasmine Jenga is so good at it write your notes down do whatever you need to do but that one if you watch this video don't fail it seriously don't don't do it <laughs> try not to anyway <laughs> and then last but not least evidence um, evidence is an interesting one because my advice for you guys is evidence is the evidence that you learned in university um, I know you'd be like I don't remember I don't remember what we learned in evidence that's what you would think that's what I thought I'm like okay I remember a few things in evidence so you have to refresh your memory um, Mr. Lungu, Sir Council Lungu is very good with like refreshing your memory he'll give you all the notes and stuff like that but it really is the same evidence that you learned um, in university um, with a few additions now things become important how to how to so things like how to produce a document whether it's a simple document or a criminal document that becomes important now because we're looking at the procedural um, aspect of evidence also you guys are gonna do I hope you guys will be able to do trial advocacy with state council Shonga loved it. it was one of my favorites but yeah you guys should actually sign up for that it's very very helpful it helps you boost your confidence and you speak before actual judges so you know if like the arguments that you have would stand in court and i, I promise you it's actually very interesting and i i recommend this to everyone guys just sign up 
and try and do it i know a lot of people will be like no i'm introverted but i mean if you're gonna be a litigant then you should do it you should definitely do it right and then um yeah i mean with evidence the only warning i'll have for you guys is his exams are bulky they are so bulky guys like sure they are very very bulky but um as i said if you know his exams are usually like stories and sometimes they're actual cases so listen to like make sure that you read the cases and listen to what he says in class and it's it's gonna help you guys honestly it's really gonna be helpful for you guys so i feel like this video has been very long and i'm sure you guys is just as exhausted as i am but i felt like it was such a necessary video and i'm so happy to have done it if you guys have any questions honestly feel free to like put them in the comment section dm me on instagram dm me on facebook i actually opened up an actual facebook page for um these videos because i know like a lot of you guys were unable to share them because i have privacy settings on my personal facebook um i've opened up my instagram so you guys can still like dm me um i know like it's very nerve-wracking getting into ZLE, but I hope that these tips that I've given you guys in each of the courses will be very helpful. I mean, I will do another video on exams and how to prepare yourself mentally for exams, because trust me, I was not prepared for what I was getting myself into with exam time. Like, I was ready to write the exams, but guys, the level of exhaustion. However, I will definitely like do a video for you guys, um, step by step, giving tips, obviously. We'll do a similar thing as we did in this video where we talk about each of the courses, what to expect. Um, hopefully that it will be helpful. I mean, it doesn't hurt to like just listen to the videos and see if you can pick one or two things. I hope that even in this one, I hope you guys have picked up something that will help you. Um, and also, yeah. So thanks, thanks you guys. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will put my social media um, details as usual over here somewhere somewhere wherever i'm gonna put those guys for you guys um feel free to get in touch um thank you so much again for watching my video until the next video hasta la vista